have the privilege to invite Dr. Suhas Haldipurkar and uh, he is very renowned uh, anterior segment surgeon and uh, we are blessed to have you sir and uh, he has been kind towards us because our speaker Dr. Sudhir Shivastav could not make uh, his presence over here and it would be great when we listen and see the carry on message which uh, Dr. Suhas is going to give us today. Dr. Grover, you can please come forward and take your seat. Thank you, Doctor, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, I'm sorry since uh, these were last minute uh, cases put together. Uh, they are not in a proper flow, but uh, I must compliment uh, Anaga for a beautiful, very informative talk. Uh, what I'm going to uh, speak about, my topic is uh, my technique went wrong. So obviously these are all surgical uh, uh, mishaps that happen, but sometimes it is important, but uh, from each uh, mistake that you've made, you learn something. Now what happens normally is when you're operating, your attention is focused onto one thing that is nucleus management. And when that happens, very often, you know, uh, uh, s there are a lot of things happening around and you miss looking at them. If only your attention can once in a while go around, uh, it makes a huge difference. It, it can definitely, uh, you know, help you avoid those things. Now, here is a case which was very easy for me to avoid it if only my attention had gone. And what's going wrong here is that sometimes, I mean, this is an... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So this was a case of, uh, uh, you know, white cataract intumescent one. Oh, was it the same? So, so the rexis has been proper and after the rexis, when the phaco starts, I'm more focused on the phaco, but now this is a very old film, mixed, uh, maybe more than 50, 12 years. So that time there was a small flaw in my technique. Uh, in a sense, uh, you, can, you can see those are all 2.8 incisions my focal, uh, phaco tip direction was not in the best position but every time i would chop it you know that sharp edge of the phaco tip would go to the sides and it would touch and you see it has made a small nick in the capsule now after this is edited but after that nick took place there are another two rotations when I missed seeing it, if only I had seen what it needed was to stop, inject viscolase to the side pot and go with the forceps and convert that nick into a round edge. But fortunately, nothing happened. You can see those, uh, uh, you know, the edges flapping. Now this is one important thing which, uh, which was brought to a notice by Dr. Rohit. Uh, sometimes this tear can go to the posterior and if it doesn't go, then a surgery, phaco is uneventful. If it goes, sometimes it goes even before your nucleus management is complete and then to get a lens of your desire into the bag, or into the sulcus becomes difficult. There's nothing more that I had to show in that case. So this is a case where uh, I learned the hard way. When you have totally plastered, you know, iris with uh, the pupil totally occluded, 
the only way you can do it is by using a cutter but a point to be noted is you don't have to do such an extensive opening because this pupil once you once you cut it it's bound to expand so instead of being over enthusiastic in opening it up even if you open it a little and release you know go under the iris and uh, with the spatula and really release the plastered iris it has a tendency to expand to the desired extent this was a case where the capsule was uh, completely fibrosed so doing your rexis uh, obviously had to be you know done by using multiple instruments like in this case i had to use a cutter um, and after that also uh, it was uh, you know very unusual kind of a case where phaco was not possible i had to literally cut those uh, it was a long standing uh, cataract case uh, even the nucleus in the cortex was so firmly adherent uh, there was no proper nucleus it was all absorbed but what was left was so much fibros even the posterior capsule had to be open with the uh, needle and then cutter couldn't open up the posterior capsule so i had to use scissors to make a slash into the posterior capsule but what i wanted to show in this case was now look at the size of the pupil now pupil is fully expanded i could have stopped short right in the beginning uh, well in this case it didn't matter because the posterior capsule is so thick and opaque that the glare issue will not occur in this but if uh, you know if the posterior capsule was to be normal this large dilated i mean iatrogenically created pupil would have caused problem to the patient these are some of the uh, you know judgmental errors now this is another common mistake that we make when you have a hard cataract even if you are on micro phaco you tend to sometimes go for a continuous phaco because otherwise the nucleus doesn't really uh, you know uh, behave well these are all grade 4 plus or 5 so what happens one your energy used is high you are quite focused on breaking the nucleus but what's happening at the wound you do not look at if you look at that probably you would uh, do something just even before this happens now here what has happened is as you know the wound has burnt and wound burn used to be a reality till we have the modern machines but even today with hard cataracts and if you are using conventional phaco you can get it so what's the way out now one thing this wound will not self seal see even the air doesn't hold there and you can't take the regular suture so you have to resort to a horizontal suture and very often we are not trained to take a horizontal suture and the only way you can go about is to take you know oppose the anterior and posterior surfaces and after that suture is taken before you tie it you inject some air because on a shallow ac if i tie the suture you cause severe astigmatism horizontally i mean severe astigmatism so form the chamber take a suture and depending on what your post op results are maybe after a week or two try and remove this suture early or else uh, uh, you know you can land up with a bad astigmatism now this is a classic case and a judgmental error i wouldn't do it today now watch it carefully because you don't get to see it again very often very few people get to see a classic pupillary snap sign and the hydro dissection that i did was not heavy you notice that yes that pupillary snap 
should have stopped me there and what ideally I should have done was stop just go with viscoelastic try and find a gap between the rexis margin and the nucleus and inject a viscoelastic which is dispersive so now the viscoelastic goes under the nucleus then you go with two instruments one spatula one chopper and like how we, how we do with SICS where the nucleus is taken out of the bag by rotational technique get the nucleus out and once the nucleus is out of the bag inject some more viscoelastic so that because you know for sure that your PC has broken now at this stage if I continue with FACO what happens you will see today it's routine and that can happen if you're extremely observant during every procedure now if this this snap sign was so brief if I would missed uh, you know I, I noticed it I knew yes it has happened but uh, you know sometimes you need that on the spot thinking of changing your uh, style I thought I would try to be a little more cautious with FACO try to do a slow motion FACO and try to create less turbulence in the AC but it didn't happen and continue with the and I was trying to be very very uh, uh, you know very slow with it fully knowing that at any stage it can happen but before it happens I have to be careful but that was not to be and half the nucleus has already dropped in once that happens there is another thing that you have to do one thing you have to be very cool about it you have to assess the hardness of the nucleus that has gone in and here obviously the nucleus was not very hard which is easily manageable with fragmentum so I just go about the case like normal while doing this cortical wash even if some of the some more of cortex falls in I'm not really worried because anyway this patient after the lens is put in is wheeled into the VR theater I mean if you are fortunate enough to have a VR theater working at the same time uh, it's no big deal but otherwise I would just put a lens suture the wound but normally as a cataract surgeon we don't suture it but here you definitely suture it and then uh, either on the same day or after a while when the pituitary surgeon feels that's the appropriate time to intervene uh, he goes in but when this happens what's important is we talk to the patient we explain what has happened it is so very important that you you know you kind of uh, uh, subdue your ego and uh, tell the patient that a small mistake has happened this is very common and it happens for a reason that happens either because uh, the injectors were faulty or they were not maintained well or you didn't check it before implanting it now sometimes this trauma will go unharmingly but in this case that that shoot caused so much of a trauma that from the angle it started bleeding and the choice for me was to either try and contain that bleed at that time but I just couldn't stop it so I closed the eye uh, sent the patient back called him the next day and next day the bleeding had stopped and the AC was full of form blood so and I just couldn't drain it I had to use biomanual to do it and today we have injectors where one thing once the injector gets old you have to always check it and if there's even if there's slight resistance in that then either you replace it and today even for a new injector if you get it loaded with a spring uh, you know it can avoid such mishaps and these instrument makers can uh, you know, load your injector with an inbuilt spring to avoid such mishaps. This was a case done by my resident, and uh, and there were so many uh, you know things that sh should have been done, which were not done. This patient uh, probably iatrogenically that resident caused 
some trauma to the zonules and then he sutured it and asked the senior resident to have a look at it. The first mistake here is if you have noticed zonular rupture, first and foremost you have to put hooks if you are planning to put a ring because you know putting a ring itself can cause trauma and cause more amount of zonular dialysis or the angle from where you are putting your endocapsular ring has to be such that such ripping of you know of the zonules uh, should not occur what i would have done the angle from which my endocapsular ring went in i would have definitely changed it uh, but it was not to be this was a very unfortunate case even this case uh, was easily avoidable this patient had a large cornea and he had he was uh, operated with uh, three piece i mean single piece pmma lens in the sulcus and the lens had uh, you know shifted to one side and patient was extremely uh, unhappy and because the white to white was so large that uh, putting putting a, s a sulcus on a scleral fixated uh, or any of these uh, newer techniques was difficult with the prevailing lenses and when that patient was taken up the only choice for the surgeon was to use a iris clip but unfortunately that patient happened to have a extremely thin iris so during enclavation it caused a big tear in the iris so without repairing that putting that lens was going to be difficult so the surgery was abandoned by him this was sutured and subsequently this patient underwent uh, a retrofixated three piece uh, foldable lens in a different axis by making a 2.8 incision it was possible to do it this case would really uh, you know bring tears because the history is sorry the history is this patient underwent trifocal in one eye uh, one week before the vision was 66 and 6 he was happy and he was posted for the second eye done by, by my colleague and there were certain things we could have done but watch this surgery you will never get to see it very often very often not in your lifetime because this is extremely oh sorry not this one oh that means i missed it sorry no i thought i was trying to show you another case now this is this is a usual thing this happens this happens uh, very often now and there's a reason why it happens uh, as a rule we take it for granted that our lenses are uh, loaded well when you load your lens make sure that you are uh, both the haptics are properly within it what happened so both the haptics are loaded well and when you you know close it and as the lens progresses you have to be sure that the lens is progressing and the haptic is seen well now in this case uh, it was uh, not looked at under the microscope so the leading haptic just broke this could have been easily avoided if you if the surgeon was watchful and even if part of the lens has already gone into the ac it is still possible to withdraw it and avoid cutting of a lens there are different ways of cutting uh, many people would cut half and just roll it out through the 2.8 or 3 mm 
I prefer to use you know the forceps and the cutter lens cutter and under good viscoelastic it is possible to do it without causing much damage but sometimes when you cut it if you do not have a forceps to hold it sometimes the lens flips and the optic can touch the endothelium in spite of viscoelastic cover and that can cause some damage and a post-op vision takes some time to recover. And uh, these were few cases that I th thought I would share. And take home message would be every case presents differently. Complete attention to details at all the time is mandatory. And finally, what matters is the end result. So if some mishap has occurred, we should know how to put it across to the patient, uh, the whole truth, partial truth, but never keep the patient under totally, uh, uh, you know, uh, without telling about it, because it matters a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And that was really a delight to watch such good uh, experienced surgeons videos. It was really difficult even to give a blink and uh, that gave so much of learning and all of us have become more vigilant from now onwards and will give equal attention to everything happening around. Fabulous. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think it was very educative. The reason is he's very insightful, he's very honest and he's a great teacher. He understands what the audience is understanding. That beautiful rapport, that fantastic and as excellent surgeon. So all combination makes it a beautiful.